Hey, so this is Josh with Caligas Photo. We're talking about the Contax G2 35mm rangefinder. The Contax G system was introduced in the 90s as more of a high-end luxury item. Because of this, because it was more of a high-end item, the G1 and the G2 can often be found in like new condition or even new in the box. The G2 can be found in titanium or champagne color also in black, the Millennium Edition it comes in its Halliburton style case, which is the same color as the champagne. It says contacts on the outside and uh, looks more like a James Bond spy type, type of thing. That case will hold the the body, the 28, the 45, and the 90 millimeter, along with the TLA 200 flash in here. The, the case, you can also find a really, really rare one out there, a black uh, case for it, the black Halliburton style. So either one of those would be a really, really nice piece to go with your collection uh, or your user. The G2 with its 45 millimeter seen here in 1999 went for about 2250. That's about $3,500 in 2020, uh, adjusted for inflation. Right now, going used, this system can run you with a 45, it can run you around thousand thirteen hundred dollars for champagne color in the US, uh, about 30% more for black. Speaking of the black one, the G2, the 28, the 45, and the 90, and the TLA 200 flash can all come in both titanium and black colors. Uh, so either one of those would be a great outfit to have. This G2 we have, we have the 45 millimeter, we have the 90 millimeter, and then also the 16 millimeter. This is much more rare of a piece, so I'll show you what this one looks like on the camera and, and what some of its images can produce. This is a really, really fun piece. A lot of the contacts lenses, I wouldn't even say widely considered. It's pretty well a fact that the Zeiss lenses here are some of the sharpest lenses ever made. Because of the design of the camera, the depth that the lens can go into it, especially their wide angle lenses, the 16, 21, and the 28 millimeter are some of the sharpest wide angle lenses anywhere. Uh, so in Leica users, they'll often adapt these to Leica M mount to put on their cameras. So, so that's pretty impressive uh, to see them adapted to the latest modern cameras going all the way back to the 90s, that they're, they're the sharpest ones out there. For the lenses available for this system, starting with the wide angle 16 millimeter polygon, the fixed F8 aperture, you can see it's very, very thin, easy to use. This, the manual focus is right here on the side. Um, so that's really, really nice. It has its two times, sorry, four times neutral density filter, which is two stops. So that'll even out your corners and make sure you're, you're getting a nice even shot. Very easy to slide on and off. The only downside to this is you cannot put the cap on with the finder. So you'd have to put it back in its case, uh, which is not a big deal, but ideally you're gonna just use it the whole time. Uh, so that'll keep out your corners. The next lens uh, in the outfit, and I should say too, the 16 millimeter is available. Uh, the 16 millimeter can be used on both the G1 and the G2 contacts rangefinders. The next one in the lineup is the Biogon 21 millimeter 2.8. Like I said, often considered sharper, much sharper than the spherical 21 for Leica. Uh, the it also has its external finder. And it's made only really to work on the G2, but with some modification, it can be adapted to work on the model, uh, the G1 contacts. The next one in the lineup, the Biogon 28mm f2.8. Again, works on both cameras, uses the internal rangefinder, so all your lines are lined up there pretty easily. Then a more common lens is the Planar 35mm f2. Again, that one is made to work on the G2, but can be modified to work on the G1. It's not the end of the world. And then your most common kit lens, or your most common lens in a kit, is gonna be the 45 millimeter. Put the cap back on this for us. The 45 millimeter seen here, the Planar 2 F2, very, very common lens to be used. Fits in the EverReady case pretty, pretty easily. You saw me take it out in the beginning. Um, this will again fit on both the G1 and the G2. Next we have the 90 millimeter F2.8 sonar. It works well on both the G1 and the G2. Uh, so this and the 45 are a really common pair up. If you can get the 28 to go with it, that'd be great, or a nice wide air 21. Um, personally, I like this outfit here, the super wide 16, the nice medium 45, and the telephoto 90. Uh, so you have really great portrait range, landscape range, pretty much whatever you want to do in this outfit. Um, the 
last lens that was made up until what well, came last made in 2000, the year 2000, and only works on the G2, cannot be modified, is the Vario Sonar 35 to 70 millimeter variable aperture. Uh, it's not anything spectacular in what it can produce, but if you're into zooms, it is the only zoom lens available for the system. Very fun lens to use, gives you a lot of versatility. Um, you're not changing around so much. As far as the layout of this camera, we have our, our on off switch right here, which also has the auto exposure lock right there in it. The shutter speed dial, which will go all the way from four seconds all the way up to 4,000th of a second. The previous G1 can only go from one second to 2,000th second, so we're adding a few stops on both sides for, for shutter speed there. The flash sync speed is advertised at 1 200th, which actually is 1 1 80th of a second. The previous G1 was 100th of a second, so nice improvement there as far as speed goes. The weight is relatively the same, uh, about 20 ounces, tw uh, 560 grams on the G2. 16 ounces on the other one, so no real weight difference there. The EV is really similar. You have aperture priority, manual TTL flash, and manual flash for your exposure modes. One of the quirks on this, the frame counter, or the timer for the bulb, is it counts up to 59 seconds and then resets, which if you're shooting that kind of shutter speeds, you're probably shooting at night, and since the LCD on top is not illuminated, you're not gonna be able to see it. So that's kind of irrelevant. You're gonna probably use an external timer or something, maybe even your cell phone these days to, to time out your bulb exposures. So that's that's kind of an odd one. The camera runs on two CR2 batteries, uh, both two in the camera and two in your TLA 200 flash. The nice thing about that is if your batteries run dead in your camera, you can always take them out of the flash and keep shooting, you're not dead in the water. You should, as far as the manual is concerned, you should get 80 rolls of 24 exposures. But uh, if you're constantly pressing down the shutter button and focusing and making sure your focus is good, you're gonna get much less. I shoot a lot of 36 exposure films, so I'll often get around 30 to 40 rolls on a set of full batteries. Um, so it's not, not necessarily the end of the world, but it is something to be careful of. They're not common batteries that you're gonna pick up at uh, your, your local store. Uh, so make sure you have either an extra set or be prepared to take them out of your flash. Talking about the autofocus, it is set by uh, manually by this dial right here, so that's really cool. You can you can see on our readout it is changing. If we change it over to single servo autofocus or continuous, right now we're on continuous, so no matter where we're facing, it will continue to refocus on our on our settings out there. I'll show you what the the LCD looks like on the inside of the viewfinder because it does show whether you're in autofocus or manual focus. It shows your your distance which is really nice when you're using the 16 millimeter hologon because it does not couple with the rangefinder since it's not an autofocus lens you either guess or you can put it into autofocus press the shutter halfway down it'll it'll tell you what your distance is and you can come over here and adjust for that looking at the super wide depth of field that you have with this your, your zone focusing is pretty safe. You can put it into an infinity and get all the way down to about 0.6. Uh, maybe not crazy, crazy sharp all the way out to the corners, but or out to the edges of that depth of field, but, but it is a nice, easy way to do it. So this is a very easy lens to use, regardless of the, the way the camera is designed. We have our exposure compensation here. We, um, on the shutter speed dial, like I said, we have the auto and the sync speed, which is 180th, advertised at 200. The dial rotates all the way around, not a big deal. Um, the ISO dial over here, you have your dial on the left, which is going to set your frame rate. So you have your single shot, your continuous low speed, continuous high speed, self timer, and multiple frames per, per exposure. And then your lens release, and then the door release, your PC sync right above that. When we open the door, you can see this one has fresh seals, so that's looking good. We have DX coding on this on the here, so your ISO can be set up either manually or we'll just read DX coding. We'll go ahead and load it up with some. Let's see, we have just some Fuji 200. It's very very easy to load. You just pull it across, close it up, and it loads automatically for you. So we can see here we're on frame one. We're on auto exposure. Let's put it on single shot, and we can see. It fires very, very quickly. Easy response, nothing really to it. Uh, very user-friendly camera. Like I said, we have continuous low speed. 
and then continuous high speed, which is four frames per second. Let's see, we'll put it into manual and get it full burst here. Let's see. So that's really cool. So not necessarily a sports speed, but, but a really good usable um, frame right there. Beautiful little camera. Let's see, the TLA 200 flash is standard with this. Earlier we had with the G1 a TLA 140, which only took one battery. This one takes two, which again is nice because you can share that. So it's, it's very easy to use manual and TTL modes on top. You can set what lens you're using. So that's really, really handy. Overall, the Contax G2 uh, is a very user-friendly camera, very easy to use, very ergonomic, not really anything bells and whistles that you don't need, but everything that you would want in a shooter, street shooter. Yeah, so with that, let's uh, show you some photos. We take this camera out and we're gonna demo a little bit what it can, what it can do. The 16 millimeter, 45 and the 90 millimeter. Uh, if you guys want to check it out um, or get your hands on it, you can check us out online uh, or give us a call, stop by our store. So yeah, if you guys like this video, um, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment. Uh, I hope you consider subscribing, share with your friends, let us know um, down in those comments what kind of camera you'd like to see um, in the future. Um, we get tons of stuff in, so I'd like to be able to share that with you guys. Um, we'll catch you next time.